What's up, everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of Kung Fu Tweaks, a documentary web series that chronicles my ungraceful attempts at learning traditional Kung Fu. My name is Tweaks, I'm also known as Brian, and today we're going to take a first look at what's involved in learning a weapon. As I've said in my past videos, the first weapon that we learn is staff, so that's where we're going to start. Full disclosure, this is the very first time I've ever been trained in a weapon. Sure, when I was younger I could rock a mean wrapping paper roll, but this is my first official weapon. And I think it's a fitting first weapon, as it can do damage, but I'm not in danger of cutting off any of my appendages. However, I have injured myself with the staff already, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But enough of the disclaimers, let's do this. The very first time we pick up a staff, the beginning movement and technique that we're taught is called the flower. It's the beginning spinning combination that helps us do several things. First, it teaches us how to properly hold and guide the staff when we spin it. Secondly, it begins to strengthen our right forearm, as it's this arm that supports the majority of the weight, while also conditioning our hand from the constant movement. And thirdly, it teaches us how to properly move our bodies while holding a weapon. The very first class I had with staff, we spent the entire hour just on this one movement to help us learn the technique properly while also teaching us how to turn our hips with the staff. Now for many students, the next movement that we learn is called the reverse flower. They call it the reverse flower because the spinning motion is very similar to the regular flower, but the spin is in the opposite direction. The reverse flower is designed in such a way that it can be performed by itself, or with a simple movement, it can be performed alongside the regular flower. The reverse flower relies primarily on good wrist movement, but it does require a healthy dose of hip movement as well. So far, this is the scariest movement that I've learned because I'm afraid that I'm going to hit myself in the face. But I've been lucky so far, and that hasn't happened. After we spend a good deal of time getting better at the flowers, we then begin to incorporate some other staff movements with them. The idea is to teach us how to transition from flowers to another movement, which is very common in many of our forms. The first few that we focused on are an overhead swing that ends in cat stance, an overhead swing that ends in a 60-40 stance, an overhead twirl ending in a single leg stance, and finally, a jumping vertical strike landing into a drop stance. As many of you may remember from episode 3, my drop stance is not very good, and as you can see, I still need a lot of work. After we spend time improving in these fundamental movements, we then begin to learn our very first form that's simply called basic staff. This routine is meant to teach us fundamental lessons when using the staff. These lessons include how to transition in our stances while holding a weapon, where to apply leverage when swinging the staff to maximize our power, basic striking and blocking movements, as well as moving, sliding, and transitioning the staff in our hands without losing our grip. Believe it or not, it's the basic staff form in which I injured myself. You see, in a particular movement, we block up, and then by sliding our hands into another position, we transition that block into a strike. When I was practicing this movement, I didn't slide my hands far enough down the staff, and when I went to strike, I ended up raking the staff across my leg. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. And I was left with a pretty big bruise for about a week and a half. Suffice it to say, I haven't made that mistake again. Right now, I'm still learning the rest of the basic staff form, as I currently only know about half of it, while also trying to improve at the other basic techniques. As I progress, myself and the other students will begin to learn more forms, such as the GBSC basic staff form and Yin Shogun, a much more advanced staff form. However, more on those in a future video. In the meantime, I'm going to continue working on the basics, so I'm not only ready to move on, but also so I don't butcher myself again. And unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this episode. As always, let me know what you think about the show in the comments below. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, be sure to post them down there. If you like the show, give that thumbs up button a click. And if you really like seeing my basic staff forms and movements, why don't you give the show a favorite? But until next time, my name is Tweaks, this has been Kung Fu Tweaks, and I'll see you guys next time. Zai Jin.